Okay, so you might be new to Equatio Math Space and wondering how do I enter in answers to an assignment. So really quickly, I won't be able to go over everything. I do want you to play around with the different buttons that are available, but I want to show you what you can do. So here I am in a student account with a single question that was handed to me from my teacher, and it says to identify the key features of the graph below. And if all you have is a mouse or a trackpad, you can still use this tool really well. It just gets a little bit messy when you try to write stuff, which is why the first tool in the toolbar at the bottom, the equation editor is super helpful. So when we click on the equation editor, you get this box at the bottom, which you can hide by using the X again. And there's some things at the top that are going to be really useful. But let's just say I wanted to enter in some actual math, like, I don't know, sine, cosine, stuff like that. I can just type it in Y equals sine X. And if I wanted something other than, you know, your typical keyboard stuff, like the number pi, if I wanted to subtract pi, I can actually just type in PI and it starts figuring it out. This equation editor is so smart that if you need something specific, you can just type it in. Like if I wanted a square root, I'll just start typing squared or square root, and then it'll give me the thing that I need, and I can start putting in some other uh, items. If I wanted a math symbol like epsilon, I can start typing that word, and it'll give me epsilon. So if you're going to do something like y equals the element of the reals or something like that, so we're doing the range of this thing, I can say y epsilon, uh, where is it? There we go. Y is an element of the reels. And you have all sorts of other options too. You know, the space bar works. It is a text editor after all. But if you don't want math, and by the way, I never showed you how to put the math in. So let's do that. Let's say G at X equals two to the power of X. That's not this thing. But then you're going to click on the insert math in the bottom right hand corner. It's going to insert a uh, piece of text here. It's not actually text, it's a graphic. And you can do all sorts of, so when you have it highlighted, you can have it speak it to you. You can enter in a label to it, arrange it forward, backward, all this other stuff. We're not going to worry too much about that. You can play around with that, but you can rotate it. You can shrink it. You can grow it. When you do shrink and grow it, it can get kind of, kind of gross. Um, so I do recommend that when you're sh shrinking and growing items that use the, the corner here with the shift key on your keyboard so that it grows, uh, proportionally. So you can just hold down shift while you're dragging to have it grow proportionally. If I like, oh, you know what? I made a mistake on that. When I highlight it, I can just say edit math and it'll bring it back up into this toolbox for me, even if, uh, oops, even if that was emptied out. So it was emptied out as you just saw, I can say edit math and it brings it back in. Uh, now, what if I wanted to do something a little bit more specific that had text in it? Uh, inside that equation editor, there is actually a text or insert text tool. This is a paragraph or specifically a sentence of text. And then I can say insert that and it just inserts that text. Okay. So if it doesn't, if you don't want it to look like math with the italics and stuff like that, you can use the text tool. There's a shortcut for that. Actually, let me just delete all this. And it's just by typing in T E. So if we type TE in here, it's going to say, oh, you want text? I hit enter on my keyboard. Yes, I want text. This is text. And away I go and I can insert the math. There's a shortcut for inserting the math. I forget what it is. Um, I'm on a Mac, so let's just try this out. Y equals sine X. And I'm going to hit, uh, oh, I don't know, command alt or option command enter. Nope, that didn't do it. Uh, control option command enter. Oh, that did it. Control alt command enter or control option command enter. So try that on windows, whatever that might be. It was, it was, uh, quite the keyboard anyway. Uh, so that's, you know, there's lots here. You've got your alignment tools. There's, uh, some extra symbols in here for layout and strike through. And, uh, you got, you can favorite if you have a, if you create a function that you really are going to type in a lot, you can make that a favorite. Um, you got some symbols that you can put in. So they're all in here and it's a very smart text editor. It does get in the way a lot. Uh, you can uh, make it uh, taller or shorter, but also hit that X so it goes away. Next is the latex editor. And this is more for if you really know what you want to type in. Latex is a, a language for entering in math. I wouldn't worry about it too much. After that is your graph editor. You can actually create and insert Desmos graphs. So if I wanted an equation of a line, uh, let's say two X plus three, and I want to insert that graph, it'll go ahead and it'll insert a Desmos graph for me as I had it laid out in that Desmos. If I double click on it, it brings it back up and I can do things like change the window and replace the graph. Um, and so, yeah, you can just really quickly insert graphs that way. It's super duper awesome.
Now you'll notice that when I'm clicking on things or after I've inserted stuff, I'm able to highlight it. That's because of this tool right here. That's the select tool. All right, so we talked about the graph editor there. This is really cool, the handwriting recognition. If you're not so good with the typing, if you've got a, a tablet, like I've got a drawing tablet, this little pen, this stylus I can, I can draw on. You can also use the mouse. Um, but if I would rather write out what I'm doing, it's pretty good at figuring out, uh, let's see here, let's do uh, uh, negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And you can see that I'm on an angle and everything like that. And it figured it out and I can insert that math. So the handwriting tool I find pretty slick. So that's another way that you can get stuff inserted. Uh, next up is the speech input. You can actually talk to it. Uh, there's an Equatio mobile. So for those of you with a tablet or something like that, or even your phone, very handy, actually really easy to use. So check that out. The select tool is exactly what you would think. And then there's the free hand drawing tool. And this is what allows you to draw on the screen. So you can use your mouse or like I said, my tablet pen. Um, and we can change the color of the ink. Let's go with a nice magenta-ish thing. And so you can start drawing and highlighting. So if I wanted to say this is a vertex, I could highlight that there. And then I can either type in my word vertex or I can even write with the ink vertex. It's not the nicest inking tool that I've used in the past. I'm a really big fan of Microsoft's inking tools in like Microsoft Word and OneNote, uh, but it does the job. Now, if you don't want to um, hand write the word vertex, uh, we can go ahead and we can use the text tool and I can say vertex and you can also colorize uh, your, your text. I don't know why it's not letting me select the color. I want to select my text color, but normally you can. So I'm, I'm not really entirely sure. Why can't I colorize my text? So let me insert that. Yeah, it's not letting me change the color for some reason. Hopefully it does for you. Not really sure what's going on there, but now that I've got the text inserted, maybe I can change the color after the fact. Mm, there we go with the fill. So yeah, so it's working afterwards. I don't know why it's not letting me do it uh, ahead of time, but there you go. You'll, uh, you can use the fill tool right there. Uh, then you get your shapes, play around with your shapes. You've got your smart shapes. That's actually a really cool tool. And then if you're doing chem or anything like that, you can have a, a scientific calculator, a periodic table, um, and a molecular view of stuff, which I'm not a chem guy, but it's pretty cool. The periodic table is also pretty handy. So uh, you can get some information and you can also start creating, uh, use that for your nomenclature as you, as you type in things. So if you get a question like this, where it says to identify the key features, you can use your freehand drawing tool. You can use your text insertion uh, and you can go ahead and draw on this like a canvas. And if you need more room, you can add more canvases, you can delete your canvases, you can re, you know, reorder them, uh, all of those things as you work through. Uh, I know it's a bit of a longer video, but hopefully that helps and that shows you how to use the tools in Equatio. One last thing, just before I go, don't forget you got some things up here at the top, play around, play with some things. You can insert uh, images. And also down here, the big blue Equatio icon gives you even more options. If you go here and you click on options, you can change your background. If you have a premium account, there's more things that you can change and uh, you should play around. You should totally check that out and, uh, and see what's available for you in this program. Once you're done, if this was an assignment that was given to you by your teacher, this blue button up here won't say share. It'll be a paper airplane and it'll say submit or something along those lines. And that's how you create a submission for your teacher to see your work once you're done. If you have any questions, you can certainly contact me.